Hi guys. Today I want to do a book review on The Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Um, this book came highly recommended by a few different people, one of which being um, my friend Michelle, who on YouTube is known by Nerdy by Association. She loved this book. So on my last Barnes & Noble trip, I picked it up and I thought I would read it. And um, so this is going to be my review on it. I I have kind of a love-hate relationship with this book. It my um, my reading experience was sort of like a roller coaster. It started out like awesome, like oh my god, this is amazing. Like I'm so gonna give this book five stars, and then it went like woo, and then in the end it was like oh yeah, it's picking back up again, and then it ended. So <laughs> it was it was a very interesting reading experience going through this book. So um. I'm going to talk about the the first half of the book first and what made it so great and then after that I'm gonna get into some spoilery stuff so I'll give you guys a warning if you haven't read the book yet when the spoilers are coming and then you can go ahead and turn the video off but um so first I, I really just want to talk about this world that she creates it's amazing like um all right so this book is about um kind of all right, it's about this girl named Karu, and she is raised by what are called Chimera. And the Chimera, they're kind of like demons. And um, she's raised by them since she was a baby. She is, um, she believes she's a human, so she doesn't know, like, how she came to, to know these Chimera. Her, her past is very, very shrouded in mystery. She doesn't know how she came to know them, she doesn't know why she's raised by them, she doesn't know like who her human parents are, if she has human parents at all. She there's there's a lot she doesn't know and there's a lot that she keeps secret from her friends. She draws pictures of these chimera in her sketchbooks and she has 90 some odd sketchbooks all filled with pictures of these chimera and what her friends at school don't know is that these chimera are actually real and they're they're awesome. They're kind of mixes of different species and like animal species and some of them are part human part animal so they're really really cool and the way that Lainey Taylor describes them in the book is just so awesome and so vivid that you can literally picture these chimera and what they would look like and what they would act like and what their personalities are like and like it's really cool. Issa is definitely my favorite she's part snake and she's just like I don't know I love her she's so nurturing and motherly like I just I want to know her she's really really cool and brimstone is just kind of this force that like jumps off the page at you like whoa and it's so cool so like the chimera are really cool their world is really cool they they live they live I don't even know like in this room but like their door is kind of a portal and the portal can lead out to like anywhere in the entire world. So Brimstone is always sending Karu off on these missions through the portal to different parts in the world to find teeth. And it sounds really weird that she's always looking for teeth, but in the end of the book it makes sense why Brimstone wants all these teeth. So it sounds weird, but trust me, it all comes together in the end. So um, yeah, that's what this book is about. It just follows Karu and her adventures finding teeth and when she meets an angel and there's you know the battle between the angels and the demons and whatever and I know that sounds really terrible and cliche but it really really comes together in this book very very nicely this this angels versus demons thing it's really cool um, I think it's not your typical angels versus demons book and what makes it so great is that the angels and the demons they aren't altogether good and altogether bad they're they're very, there's this mix of gray, you know, they're very complex and it's awesome and I love it. And I think it's very interesting that both sides have this, um, this different creation story that kind of demonizes the other side. So it kind of shows that, I don't know, there's just, there's a lot of grayness, you know, it's, I love it. So, um... Let's see. Um, one of my favorite characters in this book is Karu's best friend, Zusana. And Zusana is a human, and she... 
I love their friendship. I love them together. They have their own little cafe that they go to and it's a really, really interesting cafe where they like eat on coffins and they eat their goulash and they, they talk. And Michelle was saying in her review of this book how she loved how their conversation just seems so natural and it seems to flow and there's nothing forced about it. And I have to completely agree. Like it really, it just flows and it's not like this author was trying to make up this teenage conversation and make it sound cool you know it just it sounds so natural like something that you would hear regular teenage girls talking about in a cafe you know it's really really good writing so um i love susana because she's just she, she's so cool but she's kind of left in the dark a lot of the time so i feel so bad for her so often because um, Karu is always having to leave and go off on these missions because whenever Brimstone calls her to go and like find these teeth and whatever, she has to go immediately. So she's always leaving Zuzana being like, I have to run an errand. And Zuzana's like, where are you going? But she's so awesome because even though she's left in the dark so much, she, she still, you know, you could tell that her loyalty to Karu is there and she's not going to just leave her and be like, we can't be friends anymore. You know, she's still, she's a very loyal friend to Karu, even though she has no idea what's going on until a little bit later in the book. So she's great. I loved her character, even though she's a secondary character. I really wish that she had a bigger part in the book, actually, because she was just so cool. Um, so yeah, all the characters, amazing. The world created is amazing. Lainey Taylor's writing is like... You feel like you're reading a song or like reading poetry. It's so just the words, the sentences, everything flows together and it's it's musical. It's beautiful. I love her writing. She's huh, it's amazing writing. It's the kind of writing that I'm like jealous of and I wish I could write like that. You know, she's I, I always know when I'm reading a good book because when I'm reading a good book, I think in my head, I wish I had written this. And that's how I felt when I was reading the first half of this book was, oh my God, I wish I wrote this. I wish I could write this. Like, I wish I had that capability. So I, that's how I know this is a really good book. So the writing style is so beautiful. I love that about it. Um, now I really want to get into um, the next part of the book, which is going to be some kind of spoilery stuff. So if you don't want to be spoiled, then turn this off right now. Um, so I want to get into the love story portion when Akiva the angel comes. And when Akiva came, I thought, okay, this can either go really well or really terribly. And unfortunately for me, I thought it went really terribly because Karu just seemed like such an independent, strong character, and then when Akiva showed up, she kind of just melted into this puddle of goo at his feet, and it was for no good reason at all. It was it just seemed like a love at first sight kind of love story. I didn't appreciate that. I was hoping, I was really, really hoping that this book wouldn't turn into a love at first sight thing, but it unfortunately did. It did take that route, and it was they didn't they didn't know each other. I didn't think that there there was enough interaction between them for them to even have these feelings for each other it just happened so quickly they'd only known, known each other for a day or two you know and they were already like having having these feelings about each other and I just thought that seemed rushed it seemed forced I didn't like it it I didn't like it and it really kind of turned me off from the book until we learn about Akiva's um long lost love Madrigal who who died and it turns out that very, very spoilery. I'm warning you now. Very, very spoilery. Um, Madrigold um, is Karu, or Karu is Madrigold. They are of the same person. So um, when it got to that part, it was kind of like, okay, I can kind of understand why it's love at first sight. It doesn't seem like it's so lusty anymore. Like they're just wanting each other because of their attractiveness. Now, now I can kind of justify it by saying, okay, maybe they just like each other because their souls are attracted to each other. Like it's a soulmate type deal, but I don't know. It still just didn't jive with me. I don't know, but I really, I enjoyed Madrigal's story and that's that's when it started going back up the roller coaster for me was when it got into the flashbacks from Madrigold because 
I don't know, that love story between Madrigal and Akiva seemed much more realistic to me. It was something that I could see actually happening. I loved the masquerade scene. Oh my god, it was awesome. It was so awesome. And I loved that. So I loved her whole story with Akiva. It was really just Karu's story with Akiva that I didn't like. And I know that they are the same person, Madrigal and Karu are, but for me, they're still separate. So I love Magigold with Akiva, but I don't like Karu with Akiva, and I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense in my head. Um, so I didn't like that. I, I didn't, I didn't like Karu's love story. I just didn't. I didn't. It just seemed forced. I didn't like it. So um, I'm really, really hoping that in the next book, the love story is approached a little bit differently. I. I actually hope to see a lot less of Akiva because I think that Karu was such a better character by herself. She seemed so strong, so independent, so unique. She was like, she's artsy and she's just like this kind of urban chic, you know? I just, I don't know. I thought she was so cool and then Akiva came and he ruined her. <laughs> so um, that was my thoughts about that. Um, I also had a little bit of a gripe about Brimstone. Like, I know he's, he's, um... He's supposed to be sort of like Karu's father figure, you know? He he raised her. Um, he's the one who pretty much gave her life. I mean, so he's supposed to be like her father figure, but there's one point in the book, and this is very spoilery again, um, but, you know, if you're still here, then you've read the book, I'm hoping. But there's one point in the book where he kind of, like, beats the shit out of her. And, like, I just... That really, really rubbed me the wrong way. It was kind of, like... I don't know. It was like her father was just beating the crap out of her, pretty much, is what it seemed like to me. And then, you know, you're supposed to end up liking Brimstone by the end of the book because you realize, like, you know, what he did for Karu or for Madrigal to, like, bring her back and make sure that she has life after she's dead and all that, and you learn about the teeth and this and that, so it's supposed to be this big redeeming quality for him, but I don't know, just, like, after he hurt Karu and then sent her out on the street and she was like hurt so bad that she had trouble making it home. She had trouble getting up to her apartment. I mean, that just really rubbed me the wrong way because all I'm thinking at this point is, oh my god, these young girls are reading this book. Like, what if, what if there's girls who are reading this book who are, who are abused by their parents and this book is making it seem like, oh, it's okay because my parents are just beating me up because they love me. And then that's going to transfer over to when they're looking for romantic relationships and they're going to be attracted to partners who beat them up because, oh, they're just doing it because they love me. So that really rubbed me the wrong way, that whole thing about Brimstone. Like, I don't care you know, what redeeming qualities he has in the end, or he's supposed to have in the end. Just, like, that whole bit when he beat up Karu was just, like, I just, I couldn't get over that. And, like, I understand he was mad. I understand why he was mad. Like, what Karu did, you know, was just, you know, it's obvious that she shouldn't have done what she did. But, I'm sorry. There's just, there's no justification for that. So I didn't like that the author kind of made it seem like what Brimstone did was okay, when clearly it was not okay. That is never okay. So that's all I have to say about the book, I guess. I, I liked it. I'm going to read the second book. I am. I'm definitely going to read the second book because I'm curious to see how the story goes and I just feel like I'm too invested in the story now to stop here. So I'm hoping that the second book goes better. I am hoping that it focuses less on the love story and more just on Karu, and I really, I want to immerse myself in this world again because like I said, Lainey Taylor is like this amazing writer and she created this super awesome world that you, you just, you get immersed in. Like, I read this book in two days, you know, because I just couldn't put it down. It was so awesome. So um, I'm going to give this book three and a half out of five stars only because I felt like it went downhill with the love story, but then it picked itself back up again in the end, so yeah. So that's my review. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. The next book I have already started to read is Sweetly by Jackson Pierce, so if you're interested, please look forward to the review on this book, which should be coming in a few days if I finish it. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.